Hi, Ekcho. Hi, hi. I'm early this time. <laughs> You can hear that I've actually changed the music to the game music. Did you finish Gura Gura? I have caught up to the... So I finished the first arc of the main story and then there's like the extra bits that I'm doing right now where it's like the aftermath. You didn't know? Yeah, so I had to reschedule yesterday's stream to today. So, yeah. I'm still going to stream tomorrow. But yeah, I um, decided to reschedule because I didn't get enough sleep yesterday and I had stuff to do uh, usually um, later on in the day. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just have it on Tuesday. I didn't want to wait the entire week. Two days in a row. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot, but I feel like I've gotten more energy on like, what is it? Got more energy to stream and I don't feel as fatigued as like I used to. But it's something you have to build up on. I was so stupid when I first started streaming <laughs> that I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have like a stream like five days in a row and stuff and just have weekends off. No, I was so burnt out. I was like, no, I can only do three times a week. <laughs> That was what I learned. I was like, oh, this is why I see people who have days off in between streams. Yeah, that's what you're gonna do. Please put days in between <laughs> to have off. <laughs> Especially when you first start. Yeah. I think it's like just more like mentally tiring when like, um, I think in the beginning, you just don't know what to say. And then later on, like, when you get used to it, it's, it becomes a lot easier. It's... I've been spending every waking hour prepping for streaming. Let's go! I can't wait! You said you're gonna stream around this week or next week? Yeah, there's so much more than just OBS settings for streaming. I mean, there is a lot of OBS stuff, but there's even more stuff beyond that. And, um... Also, can you bless my multi for uh, Okuni role? I bless you! Wait, oh, I wanted her too! Noku! <laughs> the artist is Noko, I love her! I ordered a mic arm, let's go! Yeah, I'm probably gonna see if I could get a new desk so I can finally fit my mic arm so I don't have to like lean over close to my mic. <laughs> Because I keep forgetting about it, and then it's like, it's so far away. Hope you slept well. I did. I actually went to sleep early. Yeah, I didn't make the same mistake as last time where I stayed up till 3 a.m. I I stayed up till 1. <laughs> 1 a.m., but I feel like that was enough time for me to rest, and I woke up before my alarm went off. Yeah. I had a, a weird dream, though. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, I had a weird dream last night about, like, being in school again. <laughs> NV6 Summer Nobu. Dream, yeah, it was like... I was waiting up in line for lunch, and... Uh, we were, like, trying to pick out the food from, like, you know, little stations where you pick up food. And then, uh, I was like, man, where's the milk? I want to drink some milk. And they were like, sorry, we don't have milk. And I'm like, no! And they was like, do you have any, like, drinks that are, like, strawberry flavored? And they were like, oh, it's right over there. And then for some odd reason in the, in the dream, they had these little figures that you could buy and it was like what does that have to do with lunch but there was only t three different types of figures there was pokemon figures sailor moon figures and tales of figures which is the least likely chance to see a tales of figure out in the open <laughs> not the milk <laughs> and 
did you know what I decided to buy? I was like, oh, I, I really want the Tales of figure. But I saw the Sailor Moon figure, and I was like, my sister would love this. So I picked it up. And then all these other girls was like, oh, I didn't know these were there. And then they just like all snatched it up. So I was only left with this one figure. I was like, people don't Tales of. <laughs> they stole, they took everything. <laughs> I wanted to buy one for myself too. But, oh, um, yeah, I was like, was this a test? To see what would I do if I saw this all in front of me, if I picked for myself or for someone else. <laughs> We're so back, yeah. Hey yo, a 10 stream streak. I didn't even know that you could do that with points. Yeah, we so, so back. Yeah. That really was something. <laughs> yeah, I have PTSD. PTSD from school, like, I dream about missing the bus all the time. I'm like, when will this end? <laughs> oh my gosh, another three stream streak. Let's go, Ikjo! A new feature? Wait, what's in- Oh, this! I didn't even know this- <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> oh god! Thank you. I tried to mute my mic and it ended up muting and then unmuting and then you heard this loud sneeze into your ear. Curse you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alright. We are in the day three trial for Miles Edgeworth. Edgy boy. December 27th. 10 o'clock a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. I lost the last Mr. Wilkes, but ah, uh, yeah, it was mostly like um, we passed the second trial and then we found more evidence to help Edgeworth. I, to be honest, forgot what happened, so we're probably gonna get refreshed of what we found yesterday. The defense is ready, Your Honor. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it is. Very well. Apparently, the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, very well. No opening statements, so... <laughs> Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Okay. Thanks for your confidence, sir. <laughs> Karma is here. Yeah. Order. Order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? But must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. R right. Is it the killer? I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. Is that the mysterious boat shop owner? Ah, now I remember. Now I remember. This is the game changer. Is it three minutes Earth time or Dragon Ball time? Dragon Ball time. <laughs> Witness, state your profession. Ugh. I uh, am the proper proprietor of the restaurant Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. It's Mui Demon time. <laughs> I uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yup, yup, I was. Please, testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. I'll raise an objection. Mui's drawing time. Nine hours of uninterrupted, uncensored, unfortunate drawing. Yeah, I, uh, if people don't know, I was a humble. The reason why I accidentally stayed up so late, yes, like the day before, before like, uh, I think like on Sunday night before the night, day of like, 
the Monday stream, I was drawing for nine hours till 3 a.m. <laughs> and I just completely lost track of time. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't even stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! Well, that was loud. <laughs> I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. So, saying his name is gonna take too much time. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right! The witness will state his name. Ugh. Mui's too dedicated to comms. I needed to do those comms. <laughs> because of... of I, I don't think I worked on it for a couple, like, four days. So I was like, I really need to work on it. He could have just said four minutes. I know, right? Hmm. Well, uh, not really sure. Yup. No way! No way! What do you mean? My, uh, memory. Your Honor. The witness does not remember anything beyond several years. Ergo, he can't recall his own name. That's impossible. Hmm. Can't recall who you say. Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? I accidentally clicked the love button and got heavy. It was the night of the 27th, just after midnight, a yup. I was at the re in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. You didn't even know you rent boats. What do you mean? Then I heard a bang. A yup. When I looked out of the window, I just saw a boat just floating on the lake. Why does this old man look like old Miles? <laughs> really? When I heard another bang. Just then, the boat comes back to the shore, and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. I have a question on this testimony because he just says a man came up. He didn't say Miles. Oh no! No way! I accidentally fast forward. Besides, there's only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. What the heck? Oh my gosh, I hate how pushy he is. I didn't mean to skip dialogue. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Wright? Cross-examine. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well. You may begin. <laughs> he angry. Excuse me, Mr. Von Karp. Oh, I didn't skip. It was auto-skipped. Oh my gosh, that's why it was so quick. If you did this in the Monogatari series, you would miss the entire plot. You would. Yeah, I would. So, what? what's trial? So this trial is for Miles Edgeworth, the person who usually prosecutes against me. But this time, he is uh, treated as a murderer. And um, we're trying to prove Miles Edgeworth's uh, innocence. So that's, uh, that's why we see a new prosecutor now, which is Von Karma. Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. <laughs> you may cross-examine the witness. The night of the murder. Merry Christmas. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. A young... I was in the restaurant where I... Where I, uh, rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang. A yup. When I looked down the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I am stupid. I was supposed to cross-examine. What am I doing? Let me, let me just press everything. Oh, God. There we go. Press everything. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm just reading. What a shame if you lose this one. I won't lose. Maybe he had to boil his noodle. Hello, Stella Wright! Just after midnight, you say? Yup. Just around then. 
Are you sure? Pretty sure, uh, yup. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Yeah, it's going good! I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? No. D don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered clearly I did. Uh, yup. You see? Continue. Hmm, really? I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Wait, couldn't you not be allowed to do this during the conflict of interest? Wait, what? Well, he he's being framed for murder, so that's why we're trying to stand up for Edgeworth. Edgeworth was really against us helping him, though. Hi, Nancy. Hope you're doing well. Is there anyone who could verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. Th that's not good enough for the court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A, a parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Kathy boy. Keith! The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Are we going to cross examine a parrot? <laughs> I think I saw someone meme about that that we cross examine a bird. And then I heard a bang. Yup. Where did that bang seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, a yup? Good. Continue. <laughs> if that's good enough for him, he goes. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Was there something in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there. A young figure. But you couldn't see them clearly. A young At the time, that is. At the time. And then I heard another bang. I mean, that matches up with what I've heard from other witnesses. So you heard two gunshots total. A uh, yup. That's what Loda said in her testimony yesterday. Yeah, that seems like it matches up well. Just about the, just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. By your window. A uh, yup. By my window. Just right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Oh, well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. That is a rather important detail. Please add that to your testimony. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Well, wait, let me present something. How can you say that was defendant when you said it was so foggy? <laughs> Look at this! The parrot! Are you sure? Uh oh. D dad! <laughs> he had to call him dad to wake up! Dead certain, Keith! I said I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by too! Wait. Oh. Holly looking so lovely, I know, right? Witness, are you sure that person you saw was Mr. Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. Oh. <laughs> this sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into this cross examining so he could set me up for fall. Tisk, tisk, tisk. N Nick! I don't like the way things are look going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. You better act quick, or this trial is gonna be over. I'm gonna raise an objection. 
Your Honor. We proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints on Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? This dude is one of the most unreliable witnesses ever. Yeah, I think he's trying to... because he's the killer. That's what I'm guessing. So he's faking, uh, I guess his memory, so that he's as vague as possible but trying to line up with the other person what they said. Exactly! That essentially, that is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. With what? The little handkerchief on his chest? You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? I'm gonna raise an objection again. Your Honor, this witness claims that Edward said, I can't believe he's dead. But his, his word is that we all we have. If he were telling a lie... Oh my gosh. Mr. Wright. In the court of law, the evidence tells all. And I have the evidence. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Ugh. Nick, do we have the evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Really? Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high an ex expectation. However, fifteen minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough! The witness may leave the stand. <sighs> this court sees no reason further to prolong the trial, nor is there any need for any more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Hmm. Huh. This court finds a defendant, Ms. Miles, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. No! Are you kidding me? The accused was surrendered to the court immediately, to be held pending trial at the higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. Are you serious? Wait! Isn't it too late by then? Who was that just now? Me! Huh? Whoa. Oh! <gasps> Larry! Larry, you're too late! What are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. Uh, I was... I was there in the park in the night of the murder. Uh, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But, but today I just remembered it. Remembered what? The, the gunshot! I heard it too. Order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. Let's go, Larry Spaghetti! Larry Butts! So, you say you heard a gunshot? Y yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something was he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I just can't sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's it's just not right. Oh, testify. Let me testify. Let him testify. Order. Order. Well, this is the first time someone I, like this has happened before in this my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only if it wasn't Larry. It could make things even worse. Ma Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't make it any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there's another witness in our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. A 
allow me to speak my opinion. Isn't this illegal? We like to overturn the, the verdict? I don't know. In all my court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. W what is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. You're such a homie. You're not a lawyer. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for five minutes recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. December 27th, 10.28 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. I mean, none of us are lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Phew. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Huh. <laughs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said you went looking for the steel samurai balloon that fell into the lake. We specifically don't know how the court works in Japan. Yeah. From what I I believe what Stryker's saying is true, that I don't think once the, the verdict has been given, they would overrule it. I'm a lawyer if I'm playing right, so I say everything that helps me. <laughs> Why, Japan? Hold. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh. You say something right. Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? Is this game play taking place in Japan? Japanifornia! <laughs> I have no idea. I think it's Japan. But, like, the localization wants to make it America. <laughs> It's nothing. Huh? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Shamerica. <laughs> What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. Oh! <gasps> he saw them dive into the water when he fell on the lake. I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. When I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me, I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. My gosh, you're a lawyer! How do you make a stupid mistake like that? I see. I wonder what that country's laws are going by. I think... I don't know if it's, like, guilty until proven innocent, if they're accused, but I don't know. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly completed evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He had to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. Guilty until the plot say otherwise. <laughs> and that someone is... Larry, what are you getting at? It is likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten-minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything's on Larry now. It would be insanely difficult to be a defense lawyer in Japan. Yeah, that's that's how it is. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything you have saw. On the night of December 24th. Right! Leave it to me! Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Aunt Karma doesn't even have time to prep his witness. 
just hope Edgeworth is right about being our big break. The Night of the Murder That night, I was out in the boat of the lake. I was looking for something, and I uh, found it. So, quietly slipped the boat back into the rental shop dock. Just then, I was thinking about going home, and I heard this bang. I looked out of the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry! I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. That night, I was out on the boat in the lake. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? Oh, there are so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. When I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on the boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something and I uh, found it. Please, explain to everyone what you found. Looking for something? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it that you were looking for? What in the witness was searching for is irrelevant. It's very relevant. Oh, excuse me. I was having sneezing fits. <laughs> Most likely, he was hunting for this Gordy. She muted, no! <laughs> yes, I muted it. That's surprisingly close to the truth in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Get it, let's get it over with. Please, he is saying something important. So I quietly slipped the bow back into the rental shop dock. Around what time was that? Yeah. Um, well, let's see. I figured it was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12 o'clock. Yeah. You're not sure. Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Then, just when I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked over at the lake, but I didn't see a boat. <sighs> That's important, isn't it? Wasn't there a boat on the lake? <gasps> Wait! <gasps> the boat on the lake everybody was mentioning was Larry's boat! <gasps> no way! So when everybody was saying like they heard a bang, they saw a boat. That was Larry. Oh my gosh, it changes everything. Order. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Huh. But, to be honest, if you heard a bang and everybody looked in the water for the bang. Everybody mentioned they saw a boat. Larry says he saw no boat. So that means everybody who saw the boat was Larry's boat. That's what it is. So after I heard a single gunshot, I went home. Well, Nick. Hmm. It was pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? Guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Oh, I forgot to press the last one. 
Alright, after I hear the... I didn't see a single boat, so after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So the body was the Steel Samurai? Uh, it was... The Nessie Lock Monster? Uh, was the Steel Samurai, and everybody went to... Uh, Gord Lake to see this, um... Lock Ness Monster, which was called Gordy. And in reality, that, um... Gordy is just... The Steel Samurai deflated, it was like flying over into the water, and so it looked like a Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> so you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. Alright, let's see. So, we're going to have to find... Alright, let's just show... I was looking for something and I found it. Let's let's try to press this. Let me save first. Because I am unsure if this is going to be the right one or not, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose points. Alright, um... Gordy, Gordy, Gordy... We're gonna have to find S Steel Samurai. Hmm. Would it be this? Uh, let's do this. I was looking for something and found it. Let me present it. Ah, it's wrong. Or the Loch Ness Monster is a very convincing shapeshifter. <laughs> Something so quietly slipped the boat to the back of the rental shop dock, and then I was thinking about going home when I heard this bang. I looked over at the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Let me see. Um, I didn't see a boat. Just after midnight. Oh wait, 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 wait. I do see something. So I was thinking about going home. I heard this bang. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Yeah, let's, um, do this. Ah, there we go. Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? I think the first bang was the Steel Samurai deflated. That's what I said. But Miss Little Heart testified yesterday she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Sorry, I had to take a work call. Bye back. Welcome back, Striker. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. But you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? <laughs> Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? H how could you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude! With my headphones! What? <laughs> Order. Order. And stop that booing! M Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? Is that a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I don't accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Continue. Your Honor, please, please allow this witness to continue his testimony. Bleh. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. 
please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right. Leave it to me. I wouldn't if there weren't any other way out of this, believe me. So Karma doesn't listen to the radio? Not face. I think he's just upset because he didn't pay attention to such an important moment of uh this uh this killing. What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That is why I was listening to all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly when the DJ was saying when I heard it too. Oh. You were listening to your radio at high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough. It is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, your honor. The witness says he remembers exactly what DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, your honor. But very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Wait, that's so smart. <laughs> so, you turned on the radio? DJ don't talk while mu music talks. Yeah, that is true. Right. You just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. You don't know what it's like being out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> That's why I was listening to all requests show on the radio, see? Do you go by any chance to remember the name of the program you were listening to? That has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Very good for knowing the timing. Yeah. Wait, that is... If we know what radio station it was, we could try to play it back to know if it was actually from the radio or not if we heard a, a gunshot sounding sound. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell me, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it to real booming loud like... Real booming loud? Yeah, you, you know. And you had headphones on? Yup. <laughs> I thought it would help his case if it was out loud that everyone can hear. But no, it was earphones. So only he could hear that. That is so stupid. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Wouldn't you? Okay, Rose. Now it's time to get I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Can you prove that? <laughs> no, no, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it. <laughs> but I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, I came back real it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What did she say? Mr. Wright. Our favorite character, Mooie Bread. Yeah. Please cease this pointless questions. What oh. possible good could you know what the radio DJ do to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the questions only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. 
We should uh. care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, huh? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas! I heard the gun gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm. Maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the very most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there was one gleaming ray of hope in there. Gotta press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. I'm going to save my points to request videos tomorrow. Oh, nice! So he gets forced to break a, lo a lot of ten minutes. <laughs> I bet Karma was listening to the radio as well, and he's shy about that. <laughs> Maybe. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Oh wait, we already went through this. Bodanya. Bodanya. Okay. Did it actually happen? Sometime. <gasps> wait. That's... that's huge. No! You want her. <sighs> Man, I thought I was... I was getting somewhere I was cooking. Automatically... she's gonna do like... Automatically on 1224 at 1150 a.m. That's- oh, that's the second gunshot. Oh, hey, it's almost Christmas. Two gunshot. so hard he got so far. Mm. Okay, let me let me save this again. All right, let's present um this. Aha. Larry absolutely sure what you're saying is correct. Huh? What's with that face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know what I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas. When he... Oh. <laughs> the DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Done, done. Done. You realize what this means? It probably scares easy. When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But the contradiction is the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the gunshots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. What a... what a... What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, the witness says that he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. But what? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard the gunshot before midnight. Look at his pointy cheeks, so cute and sus. <laughs> Intriguing. 
I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me the evidence there. There was a gunshot before midnight. <gasps> oh, second. This is what it was. Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph. This was taken by the witness yesterday. Miss Loda Hart with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Well, Christmas solving crimes. Yeah, let's go. It's a Christmas miracle. Hmm? But there's nothing on the lake on this picture. Your Honor, the real issue is that it's not nothing is shown on this photograph. It is why the photo... Oh, that's kind of gross. <laughs> my cat is licking my... My cap on my water bottle. <laughs> Drink out of there. <laughs> we know nickel back, of course. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. The camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. Oh no, this again? <laughs> Rip. I mean, this cat is my child, so... Her saliva won't bother me. <laughs> it's just she licks her bottom with that tongue. <laughs> Hello, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I. You drink her. No, she just licked my bottle cap. It's still attached to my water bottle. Luckily, my water bottle is not open, but. She licked it. I was like, that kind of nasty, bruh. <laughs> there was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. Please do not do hydrate. That would be kind of gross. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> there was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words... When Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? If you haven't mentioned it, the ch <laughs> You know what? I kind of did it for content. <laughs> but at the same time, I kind of don't. But at the same time, I was thinking it would be kind of funny too. <laughs> I'm really considering because the lack of sleep makes me anxious and just. Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It was a fact that the camera also triggered a 15 minute after midnight. But I like money. I won't be the one. <laughs> you guys are hesitating. Your Honor, that night, there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? What are we doing? Nothing, Striker. <laughs> We're just reading. <laughs> Guess I'll decide after I finish my food. <laughs> Don't be fooled, Judge. The camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Uh, hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, Mr. Wright. Oh my gosh. I accident- My heavy hand keeps pressing the left click button. What the heck? There's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Uh, it's a gunshot. Uh, oh God. How can I tell show it was a gunshot? Fire three times?
Would it be this? Mui has a heavy hand. Like, my... I keep accidentally right-clicking because I have, like, my one finger on the left click, but, like, my ring finger is, like, heavy-handing and, like, keeps accidentally clicking the left click button. I think... Would it be the pistol? Oh, God. I'm gonna get this wrong, am I? Wait, because there was two photos, right? There was two photos. Oh, but they said to prove. Okay, I'm gonna say it's the gun. Please be right. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Okay, now that I've realized the truth. The third shot was the shot Larry heard be just before midnight. Order. Order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However... It's just leave me wondering exactly what did happen on the night of the lake. Exactly. When I say heavy hands, my hands are not big. I keep telling you guys my hands are not that big. <laughs> it, it's just like I rested my hand too much on the, the mouse. It is, this, this is true. There were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50 and another at 15 minutes right after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. <gasps> What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Mui hands is just bread. It's sponge. <laughs> huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Huh? Oh yeah, of course I remember. The murder in this case had the same idea as the murder in this that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes. If we don't figure out this out now, we'll never overturn a George's guilty verdict. A hunch, but I'm going to run with it. Right, uh... I mean, is it safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. It's a long time between gunshots. Yeah, it is. Sure is. You just watch and let me know if these if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Okay, right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now cleared up this entire case. Ooh. What do you got? What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk, tisk, tisk. So you finally realize the truth. Is that the same gun from the DL6 incident? There could be no other murderer here than Miss Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. That was shown in the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on the boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party had the other man on that boat. I admit, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have a photograph evidence at the time of the shooting. The timestamp of the photo says 15 minutes, but... Larry heard the gunshot 25 minutes before that. 
Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. It's the only way Edgeworth could have been innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain the two men on the boat are. Edgeworth and the murder. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murder. Wait, I was not reading it right. I was trying to put Hammond in the murder, and I was like, wait a minute. Edgeworth and the murder were on the same boat. After the murder killed Robert Hammond at 11.50. Yeah, because I remember that um, Edgeworth said that he dropped his gun and fell in the water. After murder killed Robert Hammond at 11.50. He assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murder took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what you make of all of this. Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name, right, it's... Oh no! Is it Load of Heart? No way. It can't be. I would say I don't know. It can't be Load of Heart. That's impossible. Yeah, it's no way it's her. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You you don't know? Blah. Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, I was thinking, Lona can't be the murderer. Or else she wouldn't have showed us photo proof of stuff. And... Given us even the second photograph where it showed nothing. If it's Loda, then I'm leaving. <laughs> we all love Loda in this household. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene in this crime was not on a boat? The murderer is right. Not right! Wrong! <laughs> what? Well then, where did the murder take place? Behind the boat shop. Show the judge where it took place. So I'm guessing there's... <laughs> Around here, maybe? Maybe, Mr. Wright? And does this maybe include the reason why the killer would choose that spot? Well, yes, well. Maybe because there is no good reason the murderer thought he would never expect it. Maybe you should try again. <laughs> he wasn't even surprised I goofed up. Okay, then it's... Show it where it took place. I'm guessing over here, then. Am I wrong again? <laughs> Where? He can't be here. How would he kill him in the water? Would it be here? It can't be the car, because that's where Loda was. Was it here? Here, of course. Ah, it was inside the bow shop. I thought it was outside, but it was inside. Here, of course. The boat shop where he lives. That's why he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing him. Do you have proof that the boat shop was a scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That 
night, he was out on the lake of the boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. He's just starting to head for home and hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time, in other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would it be if it, he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Yeah, the, the car is Lotus car, so it can be Lotus car. Mr. Wright. What happened to that night on the Gourd Lake? Please, tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. It was around when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. Came Robert Hammond. Then, he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went into the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, you oh, Mr. Wright? The boat shopkeeper. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both Miss Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. I know, he's trying to frame Edgeworth. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe the shot he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot, then ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Mr. Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to att draw attention to the boat. Plot twist, the killer was the other lawyer. <laughs> ah, yes. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shopkeeper swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's white coat back onto the body, threw the body into the lake, and that's what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. <laughs> They're trying to really let this settle. Balif, bring out the witness from before. The boat shopkeeper, quickly. Let's go, thank you, Larry! Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please, take the stand. Oh, snap! Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense had said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? That uh, what Ray had said was mostly correct. Astonishes, astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. Can't say what it was. Hmm. You, your Honor, Sir. Balif, we're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't in the boat shop either. What? What should I do? 
We'll find him quickly. We can't allow it to, him to get away. Wow. He ran away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. The search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. Goes without saying, though I can't declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, and the final day is allowed. I request that the police department utilize all the forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that botched caretaker? I think his identity became very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. OMG, why did he run? Because he's the killer. He just got found out that he was the one who killed Mr. Hammond. Very well, court is adjourned. December 27th, 11.22 p.m. Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got him out of under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do after his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through with his unique testimony, still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down in the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's a us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. If you try to smile just a little, relax! I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. W what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? The way he's shifting his eyes really reminds me of... Uh, Gumshoe. You see, like, how he's like... Has a worried look and looking side to side. They really are close friends. <laughs> it's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I've committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Hmm. Oh, is this investigation time? We did it! December 27th, 2.11 p.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. He murdered someone? I... I don't think he murdered anyone. I think he witnessed a murder and he didn't... Sit, tell it to anybody. A memory of murder. Edgy worth, edgy boy! Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently, but he never takes someone's life. Never! Yo! How's go everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisle. Huh? Maya? Oh my gosh, Kuma! Oh my gosh, Kuma! Thank you for the raid! Happy birthday! Whose birthday is it? Is it yours, Kuma? Oh no, Miss Mr. Mus's birthday! Oh, thank you for the raid, Mr. Mus. I did not read. It was Mr. Mus who raided. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, here we go. You were playing special events. What were you doing? Mistimus has descended to the underworld. Mistim one squish fourth day raid. Yeah, thank you for the sub. 
this happy sheep. You want me to sing you happy birthday? <laughs> hey, Mr. Moss. Yes? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you, Mr. Moss. Happy birthday to you. Someone's coming. All right, I, I don't know if they're coming or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope you have a wonderful birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna go back to reading. I had him swooning in the aisle, huh, Maya? S swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes. I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Now tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, baby? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you do better than that. Come on! I saved Edward in there, dude! Edgy! You guys should have been bowing before me! Yeah! Bow before your hero! <laughs> He had a, a nice voice. Take a sip. All right, I will hydrate. Today's trial. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. You weren't there, Larry. I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> But seriously, Nick, the boat shop caretaper guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really tell that this guy is telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But, what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me. Right, Nick? <laughs> yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually... Yeah, why me, Nick? <laughs> with the silent treeping. The, the closed eye face. <laughs> Poor Maya. Nick. Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? <laughs> I mean, he changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Um, uh, er, sorry, I kind of forgot. Uh huh? Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. I was in the very end of eight, third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A, a, cl a class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring of end of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? I mean, they were doing class trials in third grade? It's like, objection, hold it. <laughs> These little third graders. And they were like using their desks as like the court um, podiums. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope of money for lunch from home. Huh? I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, I do remember that. Uh, 
No way, they were playing Ace Attorney in class. I know. <laughs> I wonder who was the judge. They probably put on a fake uh, beard and mustache. <laughs> They had a little gav going, order, order. <laughs> I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. Yeah. So, they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in my class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So, the next day was held at the classroom trial with me as the defendant. Oh, there's little Phoenix. They did use Des, that's so cute and funny. I, I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it, guilty. It was you, give the money back, you're such a meanie. No one play with him, just admit he did it. You can't hide the truth, tell us the truth. You're not going to play with you anymore. Yeah, you're not borrowing my eraser. You're not allowed to relay race or the library committee. Give me my 50 cents I loaned you. Hey. Oh my gosh. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I've done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money has been stolen while was sitting. That's when it happened. OBJECTION! He shouldn't have to apologize. Wish I could have got trials back in school. I remember, I think, um, my, I, I forget it was middle school. I think it was middle school we had Debate trials. I didn't participate because I was really bad at debates. Um, so I did, didn't try because I hated, like, debate trials ended up being arguments. Where they'll be like, you're wrong and stuff. And I was like, I kind of, the type of person who goes like, I understand how you feel. This is how I feel. But like, uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> the only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. M Miles? <laughs> Baby Miles. He kind of looks like the guy from Hikuro no Go, the pro tag. Wish I could have got a trial. Oh wait, you're, I already spread that. <laughs> it wasn't you who stole my money, was it? N no. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. Yeah, most debates usually turn into arguments. Yeah, I know, right? That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But, but Miles, it was your money who, that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it, he did it. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why didn't you all shut up? <laughs> Oh, it's Larry. It is. That's baby Larry. This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up on picking on one person. Just think about what he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. What is this, Dongon Rumba? <laughs> Class trials. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's what I. Oh, I, I didn't realize I was Phoenix saying that. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did such a good thing, Larry. Oh, um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I had been there when they had, uh, have thought I've done it. So I took it a, a little personally, you see. When something smells, it's usually the butts. After the trial, everyone here are the small ones of themselves. Where's the noseless movie? <laughs> no, I have nose. Anyway, 
Edgeworth and I talked about at that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. Not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's... so sad. It was several years ago that I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the news newspaper. Wait, didn't his father know? Know what? Like... His father died, but he knew that his son wanted to be an attorney like him. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicious of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he would do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he had become. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I became a defense attorney, I would know he would have to meet me whether I, he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who could help him. Whoa, Nick. S so that is why you helped me out for free? Uh, yeah. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. <laughs> Wait, he didn't pay? Oh, Nick! Nick! Romance! <laughs> Nick! We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It may very well may be. First, there's that re car rental shop- I mean, not car rental. There's that rental boat shop caretaker. We have to find out who or what he is. I'll settle for who. I guess I could clean out some of his evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Alright, let's see. We're gonna move over. Let's go to the Grossberg Law Office. Maybe there's something here. He's the rivals, just so they could see each other more. Yes, they're star-crossed lovers. <laughs> He's out. Again. When does he work, anyway? No, no, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Guess we have to come back later. Oops. Let's move to the detention center. Edgy boy! You look as grim as always. Huh. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? Y you you don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick... I think you're the only one who could really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth didn't... Didn't, you know. Oh, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like something... That kind of thing he would do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. 
Why prosecute? Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me. And you want me to defend criminals. I'm sorry, right? But I'm not the good kind of person. When suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? When suspect. Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. Yeah. Had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago... The three of us were trapped in the elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen de deprivation. I had lost all my, of my memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. The crux of the yogi attorney's argument in court. He claimed that Yanni Yogi was, had not of a sound mind due to ox oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released during to the lack of evidence, innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. Oh. Prosecutor Von Karma. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know in the courtroom techniques from him. So, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life. He's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he had taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent ever. Oh, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does in his job is to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it is nigh well impossible to find weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! There's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I admit. No kidding. I want to show you something, Edgeworth. I want to see what you would say about it. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Let me go back. Present this. It was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, on December 28th, its statute of limitations runs out. <gasps> we only got one more day. Tomorrow. Could that be a coincidence? But, even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Oh, Miss Stretchworth. What? Hmm. What this one? N Nick, no! That's a photograph of his father. Don't show him that. Y you're right. No, probably isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. What is it? Um, no, it's nothing. Huh? <laughs> I was gonna show him a picture of his dead father. That would have been so cruel. <laughs> December 27th. Gord Lake Park entrance. Hey, pal. Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that? No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean, the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. 
I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what it may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one more thing. Eek! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Loda was camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in there for a while. I guess Loda is in a Loda trouble. Anyway, I will be seeing you tomorrow. Oh, I guess we just moved. Ah, uh, let's go to the public beach. Huh? Steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edward to show up for work. Uh, how about boat rental shop? That old caretaker got away. Yup. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem. <laughs> I know that Clary the Throat anywhere. Is that the guy from Rosenberg? Oh, ha, ha, hello. What might you be doing here? Oh, for a walk? Ah. Uh, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. I love puns. Yeah. Mr. Edward's trial ends tomorrow. <laughs> that is true, yes. Why would you go back to work, Grossberg? But from what I saw today's trial, Edward should be fine, right? It's raining outside. Oh. Well, I'm not sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Find anything out. Come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> what do you think about Mr. Grosberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Let's move inside the shack. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Hey, it's Polly! I wonder where your care I wonder where your care owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello! I can't believe he would run off and leave this poor pair to fend for herself. Hello, hello. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to talk to the bird. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. We probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police will know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Oh, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's going to hate me. Is there anything? I don't know if there's anything else of importance here, but let's go back. Yeah, Polly, cute. Let's go to. Oh, I can't go to the police. Oh, here it is. December twenty seventh, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't come back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shopkeeper. He shouted something like, Catching him is the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Let me, uh, see what this guy is doing now. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Please, think about what you're doing, Jolan... Jolinda. Don't take my Tommy away from me! No! He must be doing image training for a nasty divorce argument. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, let's go to Grossberg. He's not here? No way. Well, 
yourself and you know what that means it means time to look up a guide because <laughs> i have no idea what i'm looking for i mean oh the boat guy killed edward's dad and trying to frame edward so he could get away with it right yes exactly right yes exactly <laughs> i accidentally <laughs> i did not know i had my twitch up All right let me go on cool uh, so this would be me, Phoenix Wright, and let me look at the name of the trial is called. It is day, uh, turnabout goodbyes. I'm going to put in day three investigation. All right, let's see. Aha, present the letter from the safe. Okay, so we have to go to the caretaker shack. Got it, go to the caretaker shack. Mm. Or like you were just there too. Um, two plus two is five. Yes, and nine plus ten is twenty-one. <laughs> I got back and we're looking at a guide. Yeah, I um, I already know I get lost in these. <laughs> Excuse me, because. I don't feel like uh, trying to investigate every little thing, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the blessings. All right, let's go to the um. I think it's safe. Ah! What's wrong? Huh? Oh, but never mind. What? Tell me. Just. When I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Oh. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. That's not the safe. Oh, here's the safe. That reminds me, Nick. You're not cursing no more. Gotta weaken her so she rests. <laughs> hey, hey. Make me more powerful so I can work more! That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number of the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, one, two, oh wait, one, two, two, eight. Let's open it, Nick. Come on! I'm sure there isn't any money in there. No. But hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. She keeps muting it. Yeah, I keep muting when I sneeze. <laughs> Overworking isn't great, but I gotta make money somehow. I gotta be responsible to, like, get people's commissions done. I'm not so sure. What the? Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. Guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah, boring! There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Nerge! Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Well, why do I keep doing that? Edgeworth? Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? H how should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I was figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. 
What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are the instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond, he called out Edgeworth and was following the instructions. You're on lunch break, let's go! Eat some yummy food, what are you gonna eat? Time to work on a different thing then, your work schedule. I mean, if I... I did work just like two or three hours yesterday, but... um, So I didn't overwork yesterday because I needed my hand to heal. But my hand is perfectly healed now. So I can go back and do some work. <laughs> Chicken and waffles. Oh, wait, really? You're eating chicken and waffles? I don't think you could eat that at work, could you? Yeah. Chicken and waffles, yummy. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? One thing's for certain. You sound so excited. <laughs> Which is, I, I thought you were never going to eat it, so I was like, come on for the meme, but I honestly do really like it. <laughs> if you're okay, then it's okay, feels okay, man. <laughs> yeah. This letter is gonna be an amazing clue. Alright, we go! Wait, it says I can examine this again? There's nothing left in the safe. I wonder why the caretaker didn't take the letter with him. He left in a hurry, right? Shinji got a five stream streak? No overworking. <laughs> Please, let me, let me work. I enjoy my job. I don't have a nine to five job, so I have to discipline myself to work. <laughs> It's just, I need to remember to exercise my hand in between. Left in a hurry, right? I don't think he even came back here after the trial. Time to move. I wish it was fast travel, please. Detention center. We're gonna present this to Edgeworth. Hey, edgy boy! Edgeworth, see this letter? I enjoy my job too, and I have a 9 to 5. Yeah, I don't have a 9 to 5, so I have to discipline myself to work. And there's sometimes some days when I just feel like I can't work. <laughs> but when I do, I take full advantage of it to work as much as I can. Hmm. This came out of the safe of the shack, where that boat rental caretaker lives. Probably will be spinning bars with that sinking. One, two, two, eight, one, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight, one, two, two, eight. <laughs> I see. Revenge on me. Who is that old guy anyway? I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So, he was following this letter then, huh? Which means that there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the S S Institute of Limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. W what is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be... Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. What does that have to do with it? Why does he want to take revenge on you, Edgeworth? The case is closed. Yanni Yogi was the court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in this elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were in there for so long, it 
felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet, now making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout, we'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. Is that why he's afraid of quakes? I think so. Mui, have you ever faced an earthquake? I have. It was a very small one, though. Um, it was probably like a Richter scale of two. <laughs> so it was a very small earthquake. But I was so confused because we don't get earthquakes in our area. And it, it sounded like a big thump. Like, everything moved. But it was not like constantly shaking, it was just a one big jerk. And I was like, um, why did the bed move? Like, did someone kick the, the second floor? That's impossible. And, um, my sister has like, hey, did you like hit the ceiling? And I was like, no. And, and, like, my mom was like, the, the counter, it just moved. <laughs> I, there's no way we can't move that. It's like thousand, like a thousand pounds or something. It's like a ton. There's no way to lift that because it's like stone. So we were like so confused. What about skyquakes? Is that a thing? I don't think it is. Unless it's like on an airplane, right? Skyquakes. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's why, yeah, he, that's why he's afraid of earthquakes, because he got stranded in an elevator in an earthquake. In court, Yanni Yoki's mental condition was called into question. Objection! Hi, Zerito! They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, he claimed past the court, and Yogi was found innocent. Huh? But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to give revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me the last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean, the nightmare? Tornado? I've never seen a tornado in person. Maybe y'all were haunt. No, it was definitely an earthquake, because it happened again later on. And the whole world, not the whole world, but the, the entire area felt it, and they were talking about it in social media, going like, what was that? Was that an earthquake? No way, we don't get earthquakes here. And it was like, it came, it went through like five or six states, the earthquake. Yeah, that was insane. So my guess is that there was something to do with drilling that happened that caused a quake. Like, bad drilling. So it probably was a very important plate that got, uh, drilled. It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I've committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Quakes usually have two waves. Oh, yeah, yeah, we felt it twice. I think, I think the time has come to tell you all. Definitely the apocalypse. No, it wasn't the entire world. It was just like, um, the entire, like, like area of states got affected. That was insane. I thought it only affected my state, but it affected many, many other states. And I was like, what? A nightmare. In the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You're just gonna use up more oxygen. I... I can't breathe! You... you're using up my air! What? Stop breathing my air! 
Oh, I'll stop you. Ah, wh what? What are you? Stop breathing my hair. No, father. He's attacking father. Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the ballots. In a daze, I picked up the pistol. Get away! Oh, he hit him. Get away from my father. And with that scream, I wake. But it's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that rung my ears in the past 15 years. But what? That's just a dream, right? Right? Earthquakes generate two main types of waves, P waves and S waves. P waves are faster, traveling through rocks and fluids and arrive first, shaking the ground back and forth. S waves follow, following a slower and shaking the ground up and down side to side. You know, the one I felt did not feel like that. It was just more like a bump. I just like, like that. Like, I didn't fly up or anything, but I noticed everything else started like, like jumped like they all jumped at once and made a, a big sound which i am so thankful that my house did not collapse from that <laughs> a man killed over air i know right breathing air there should be an air tax that thought was the only thing that kept me sane for the last 15 years but what if i'm wrong what if it's real they say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it this way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi really was innocent. I think that's why he wanted re revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth. You... you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we gonna do, Nick? What can we do? So, is that guy Edward's dad? Uh, the guy that is from the boat shop is the guy who killed Edward's dad. And is accusing Edward of killing Hammond. And I think Hammond was the defense attorney, the that uh, defended Yogi. Which we think Yogi is the boat shop owner. But he used to work in the Batliff. Um, and then he got degraded to uh, a noodle shop owner. That sells uh, boat rentals. And now Mui survived a quake. Is there anything that could kill her? Dude, it was a Richter 2. It was a Richter 2 on the scale. There was barely any shaking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. Well, if the quake was that small, then it wasn't too bad, thankfully. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. There was no damage. It was a, it was a very small quake. There's someone else that knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6. Is it the parrot? Are we going to the parrot? I'm gonna double check. Oh. Oh, oh we're going to Crossburg. Ah, that's where we go. Okay. December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. M Mr. Grossberg? Ah, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding! I can't believe you're not. My, 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 my. Just calm down and tell me what happened, hmm? It's... Mr. Edgeworth? He... He... <laughs> if it was worse, Mui's nose prosthetic might have shaken... Aesthetic. <laughs> I see. So, Edward dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. 
I wonder... What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled? Hmm... Oh well... Also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edward. So deep, he wants to frame him for murder. That leads me to surmise that Mr. Edward's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Miles Edward threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irre irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he saw revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the Institute of Limitation so close. Gregory Edgeworth. What do you know about Edward's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have been one peer now, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was a very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He has a perfect win record in case in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. The spear made of medium. When Gregory Ed Edgeworth was killed, the policeman called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Miss Tife. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the Baliff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's why my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it... It seems like the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. What? So it says to move to... Oh, wait, wait. Go back. Papers and other things? Um... Yeah, so... Why would he frame Edgeworth? Is there more to say? Perhaps. Gregory Edgeworth. He was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of Von Karma if he was alive. This? Whoa-ho! So this is the letter. It does seem like Yogi was following this letter. When he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their own sake, but for his own. Huh? For his own sake? He never trusted his clients. That one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. No way his dad is a ghost. <laughs> well, I mean, a spirit medium is able to call upon ghosts and make them talk. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait, what is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose ran handwriting is this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Uh, it was Yanni Yogi? Maybe it was Yanni Yogi? Yanni Yogi? 
You claim he himself wrote this letter, then followed his own instructions? Uh, yeah, I guess that would be that what happened. Harumph! Well, you think that Mr. Yogi has split personality, hmm? I think that's definitely a possibility, yes. Hmm. No, I think not. I do not know this Yogi in any case. There's no way I would recognize his handwriting. Oh, right. Yes, right. I'll ask you again. Do you have any idea who wrote this? Was it... Karma? Um, could it be Mon Friend Von Karma? Von Karma? Oh, we have to do something with this. Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. He used it to see all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill us. Correct. Man friend Von Karma himself. I was looking, wait, I thought you, I heard Yami Yugi. <laughs> Very close. It was like Yami Yogi. Or was, what was it? Something Yogi. How do you project your voice? I find it hard to talk loud enough for the mic. Really? Maybe it's because I fixed the settings. Uh, you can, um, fix, uh, what is it? There's level settings and stuff. Like, if your mic naturally is very quiet, you can raise the, the volume. It's, like, artificially uh, messing with it. Wait, what was the filter called again? Let me check. I'm gonna check it for you. Uh, filters. It is called... I think it's called an expander. Yes. It's an expander, and then you put the output game to make it a little higher. Yeah, it's the gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not actually talking really loud. I am using uh, raise the gain so that it could like hear me better. What does this mean then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Prosecutor Von Karma. Okay, because I don't talk loudly. Yeah. Unless I'm excited. Yeah, and also you should put a limiter too, so that when you accidentally talk too loud, it'll uh, equalize um, what you say to max out at a certain point. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then you would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no! But how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Wait, was Von Karma the guy that was in the elevator? No, it can't be. Is that why they were trying to hide the the boat caretaker's name? Because it will reveal he's not actually Yogi? Yet I do not know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win, but he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. Gregory vs. Manfred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial, but Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence, and though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth's dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for that man. 
He was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Long Karma is going to bring up the DL6 and you bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty on... to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this. But even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I... I just believe in Edward's innocence. I can't believe he would kill someone. But Nick... Mr. Edward admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright. You say so, I suppose I could go check again. If the police files might be hold of in something of interest. Mr. Crossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials, hmm. We're gonna go to the criminal affairs. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. Let's go to the criminal affairs. There's hardly anyone here. They must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe is coming back today. Staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the record rooms again. Well now, I can't have just have anyone wandering around in here. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes, he's just arrived actually. Von Karma's in the record room. N nick Let's hurry. Better not be throwing away stuff. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I just noticed that he isn't here. Von Karma. He has to be here. Cabinet where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons and others are... Question marks. Most of it looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think these clothes pins is for? Don't touch that. It's evidence. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking at it in it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick! The file for DL6. It's completely empty. What? What are you doing in here? Whoa! Front view karma. Eek! Scary! Von Karma! You. How did you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edwards' defense team. Defense team? Ahem. I beg your pardon, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edwards' mentor. Pounding pavement sounds painful for someone made of flesh. Where did that come from? <laughs> uh huh, um, Mr. Edgeworth. Is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father. 
always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt the blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Hm. So you did. But what I don't get is, why do you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last of this, of this trial. It's been a while since I had a defense attorney that has this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit to his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years... Oh, wait. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You are quite the researcher. If you'd done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edwards would tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up the DL6 in court tomorrow. Hmm. We gotta present the letter from the safe. Mr. Von Karma, please take a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi? How many years has it been since I heard him call by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn after he read it. So, so you admit it? You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter? Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me a lot of needless hassle. W what N Nick, what is that thing? Is that a taser? Stun gun. For self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. Are you trying to kill me? 600,000... Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. No! No! Whoa, what are you? Nick, run! Ah! Maya got tased. But Maya! Out of my way. Ooh, oh no! I got tased too. Bro literally pulling a stun gun to the table. Wait, Edward's own teacher is the one who killed his father? I don't... I don't know. I honestly don't know. I was thinking it was the boatman, but he could be used by Von Karma. And Von Karma might be the killer, actually. Oh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Maya! The letter! Did he take it? He's gonna burn it. That's what it's, he's gonna do. He's gonna burn the letter. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could. But one shot from that thing and he knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I couldn't even call my sister. Not even now, when we need her most. I wish I hadn't woke up at all. Maya! Ugh! has to be some way I could help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya, I have a feeling that it's not legal in either Japan or America. <laughs> True. Maya, she's holding something. What is that? Bullet? But at the same time, you can bring a taser and tase people. Just like you're allowed to use a gun and call it self-defense <laughs> in America. What is that? Bullet? DL6 incident. Evidence number seven. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. You know, speaking of that, I have seen a lot of girls who have these keychains 
that have blades on them and it's perfectly legal to hold those and stuff and you just call it self-defense which i to use it as a weapon to threaten someone is not good but these people can easily say like oh but it was self-defense he was gonna hurt me kind of thing that is quite unfortunate dl6 incident evidence number seven taken from the heart of gregory edgeworth i remember Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. Oh, we got it! Still clear, bears clear ballistic markings. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Yeah, that was literally just assault. I know, right? This is a perfect spot to stop for today. My throat Detch. But I greatly appreciate for those who came and watched and uh, stick around to see the story unfold. We are almost done. So next, yes, yeah, this final day trial. Next stream will be the final trial for Miles Edgeworth. The finale. I don't think it's the finale for the entire game, but the finale for Edgeworth's trial. Um, yeah, thank you for coming to the stream. Let me see who I could raid for today. Uh, let me move over here. Yeah, hello. Um, let's raid Noemi. Yeah, Noemi's doing some art today. I hope you say hello. She's super sweet. I love her. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.